Hi, this is Deb at Color Color Everywhere, and today I'm sharing with you my process for making clusters from scraps and printed images to use on tags, envelopes, and other embellishments in junk journals and other paper arts. Oh, I'm, I, I like to do this process in this way. I um, start with uh, whatever scraps I have available that I've used or had left over from cutoffs and things like that. And this, what I'm laying down right now, are just some little pieces of brown packing paper that um, I had left over from another project. So first I laid those out and just put them out in a little grid so they're close together and I can see what I'm doing. And then I picked up some images and I'm just matching the size of the images with the size of the paper that is the background. So um, a lot of times I'll do this when I finish working on some projects and I have a lot of things still left out laying on the on the desk because I that's how I work in piles like that. So before I actually start picking up and putting things away while everything is still out and at hand and usually some similar items um, I'll go ahead and do this and um, that way I can um, eliminate some of the clutter and also have some things ready to um, uh, go when I'm ready to make some more tags. So, so that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just um, going through this little stack of items that were out on my desk that I had cut out and was using and just kind of matching them up. I don't think about it for a long time. Um, uh, I just go through my little stack and when I, if I see something I think will fit somewhere and um, it's something I'm interested in using, I will just throw it down there. So I take very little time deciding where to put something. I'm basically looking at the color and the size and uh, just going from there. In this case, I don't even have to worry about the color too much because the paper is brown and they're all the same color and anything will go with that. So I'm just uh, pulling out things that I'm interested in and I think that are the right size. I enjoy this process because it's fairly quick and um, it's not hard and it, it gives me a way to eliminate, like I said, the clutter but it also gives me a head start on uh, making other things. So now I'm, um, I, I am um, making a few more pieces so that I can use up ones, some that I pulled out that I, I want to use that I didn't really have pieces big enough for. Okay, so there I've got 12 clusters that I'm working on. Now I'll start picking up uh, text or music paper or maybe even um, little scraps of black or um, colored cardstock. Just whatever I have that's still laying there. And if I can't find something I want, I'll go in the rest of my stash and, and look there. But usually I have plenty of little piles of um, scraps that I can use. I have a couple of little drawers full of colored scraps from cardstock and um, most of those are cut um, in even shapes like you know little rectangles or squares or circles or whatever so I pull those out when I need something that's that size that I don't really need to tear any smaller or whatever So I'm just tearing and um, picking up pieces that are already a size I can use and just going through the stack, finding things that look like they might work. Now in the end, when I make the actually make the clusters, put them together, I may not use all of these pieces, but it gives me a start and it gives me a good idea of something to use.
Now, as I get farther along in the process, I get a little pickier um, about what I'm using. I almost always put some kind of uh, script or music on, on down. Um, sometimes I'll use lace. Sometimes I'll use um, cheesecloth that's been dyed, string, um, just things like that. And this is some book pa pages that has been dyed with inks. I have a little stack of purple ones here that are left over. These were left over from another project. And I'm just looking to see if there's anywhere that they'll work since they are purple. Kind of a light purple. Depending on what the paper is, um, I keep even really small pieces if I think it's something I'll use. If, if I don't think I'll use it, I just toss it as I'm going through because there's no sense in keeping it. But as you can see, the piece, I, the little long skinny piece I just laid down, that's a fairly small piece of paper. I mean, it might be inch and a half long at that long. So, you know, they're, they're pretty small, but they do have an impact on the uh, final look of the tag or the cluster. So we'll speed this up a little bit and you can actually see the process as I put all the pieces on. So here you can see where I have put lace and uh, more papers. There are um, scrap pieces that I have used punches on to make it look like um, little labels that can be used as parts of the backgrounds. Now these orange tags that you see, I don't intend to use them as that size, but I will uh, use them as part of the backgrounds on the clusters. I'm just not tearing them right now. I'll do that whenever I get ready to actually make the clusters. So once I've got uh, enough pieces on there, then I think it's probably enough to, to do the little cluster. Then I clip them together, stack them up, put a rubber band around or put them in a baggie or what, however, and um, I save them until I'm ready to make the card. Sometimes, I, uh, when I get to this point and uh, I have them all laid out, I will actually arrange the pieces in the order that I want them and, and the, the, the place that I want them, and then clip them together that way. So that when I, usually if, it's, if I'm working on it all in one whack, you know, if I'm making the clusters, putting on the cards, finishing it, and everything, I'll do it this way. Um, I'll just sort of leave it on a piece of paper like these are, push that aside, and then pick up each one as I go, arrange them, lay it back on the paper, and go on until I've got them all arranged. And then I will go back and pick up one cluster, glue it together, glue it on a card, ink it up, whatever it needs to be finished, and set it aside. And then it's a finished piece that I can use um, in a upcoming journal or however I want to use it. So now I've stored them in this little bag and um, I put a few laces in there that I that I want to use up that have just been kind of laying around and I know that I can use them on on these when the cards are made. Now these are some pieces of manila card stock I used to uh, work as a secretary in a small company and whenever I would go to the printers to pick up whatever things we needed printed, um, she would always have boxes of cardboard boxes of scraps that um, she could no longer use. They'd be like cutoffs from invitations or whatever, so it's always fairly nice paper. Um, 
I have several stacks of these long long pieces, long narrow pieces of cardstock <coughs> and also uh, white cardstock and um, they're great to use for tags and whatever because they're kind of already cut the size I just has length I just had to cut the width and they're a nice um, thickness and um, they make a tag that's not hard as a rock but it's thick enough to where it has some substance and will hold up these are dyed with uh, distress ink and alcohol inks and what have you in um, different colors and I usually do a, several of them when I'm doing it and because they make nice backgrounds so that's what I'm going to do now is um, cut some tags to use as the backgrounds for my clusters that I've just made. Sorry about the glare. Can It's kind of hard to eliminate that. So I'm just deciding on how big I want my tags and I think these are like three inches wide maybe. Looks like. I'm constantly knocking the blade out of my cutter it happens all the time I'm always looking for my blade where it fell so I'm just gonna go through and make you know as many three inch wide tags as it'll make off of this piece of paper and then with what's what's left I'll make something out of it too eventually so now I've got all my stuff back out now sometimes I, you know, I would have come back the next day and worked on this, so that's why I put them in, that's why this time I'd put it in the envelope, but um, I am going to work on them right now a little bit. Even if all I do is stick them together like this, it'll, I'll be that much farther ahead the next time I come to work on it. So now I've got them all together. I've stuck them back in the envelope. I'm putting my lace back in. And I also have some um, gauze that I put in there that I'm going to use on these tags also. Quite a bit on these tags. Now they're ready for the next day when I come back and want to work on them or in weeks from now if I want to work on them then. since I have a few tags left that I didn't have clusters made up for I'm going to uh, get a few more ready I mean they're they're here and they're laying out I might as well do it before I put the stuff all away it's just a, a way to save time and get a little farther ahead I really like these book pages I um, coffee dyed them and they have a real cool texture they're they're not wrinkly but but the texture is it's almost like a teeny tiny pebbly texture and it just feels really neat I I'm really really happy with the way these came out so I'm just taking book pages and tearing them to a uh, approximate size they'll they'll be torn again before it's over with to fit better with whatever I'm putting on there but um, this at least gives me a start It gives you a sense of accomplishment when you've got a whole stack of these ready to work on at, at whenever you're ready for them. Um, sometimes I don't have, even though I'm retired and I'm at home by myself a lot, sometimes I don't have time to um, do everything I want to do creative-wise. And so, you know, I might only have an hour or a half an hour to uh, work on something. So this way I can take that little bag out, pull out those tags, and make a few. Even if I only get two, at least I've made some and enjoyed doing it. And um, I haven't spent all my time getting it ready. I'm actually spending quality time making the, the tag. So this is the way I tend to do things, is uh, in steps like this on, on a larger frame. 
the only time I really sit down and, and make a tag start to finish one tag is if I'm working in a journal and um, I realize I've, I need another tag to go in there and uh, then I probably will well first I'll go and see if I have anything already made that will work that's finished if not then I will go and pull something out that's not finished that's already been started if I and if I don't have anything still that will is what I want then I'll start from scratch and make a whole tag but I don't like doing it that way because maybe I want a tag that's got um, inked uh, that's been dot ink dyed or something well to do that I have to get out all you know it's not a big deal but it le but it is uh, it's nicer to have something already started where you've done several things all together instead of just getting out one piece of paper getting out the ink putting on the gloves putting down a place to work on so you don't make a mess and so on and so forth it's so much easier to me to make a whole bunch of those at one time instead of one so I will try to find something that's already started um, that I at least have a base for and and do that use that instead of just doing one tag at a time. I really like making tags and envelopes and pockets and um, but I don't like spending the I don't mind doing the what I call the grunt work but I don't like spending my good time doing that so I just do it in a way that's fast and that's pretty much uh, how I work everyone's different you might like doing one tag at a time and there's nothing wrong with that that's just not the way I usually do it so I have these owls and I know I'm going to have um, I have a book like a forest book that I'm gonna be working on so I'm going to um, be using trees and owls and mushrooms and um, things like that so I um, got out one of my little booklets that um, I keep my digital images in and um, I'm pulling out some mushrooms to try to go with some of these tags so that they can be used in that journal I don't cut out every single piece of paper before I store it um, if it's something that has straight sides, for instance, you see those owls, they have straight sides. They were really simple to cut. Snip, 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 and it, they were done. So those I probably would have, you know, would always do something like that. But if it's something that's more intricate and you have to really fussy cut it, then um, I don't always do those before I put them in the notebooks. Sometimes I do. Sometimes if I have a lot of time upstairs, um, I craft areas in the basement if I'm upstairs and I'm doing laundry or something like that I'll save a little pile of um, images and fussy cut those while I'm waiting for the laundry to change over and um, I can watch TV or whatever listen to a book or something and it goes pretty easy I like having them cut out already but I have so many that it, it doesn't make sense to cut all of them out um, every single time I print some out. But um, usually I at least cut them apart and uh, that way they're, they're easier to store and I can sort them out and store them in the little books. I have several little books that, like this, it's just a little cheap three ring notebook that I made the, the pages for and um, I just have little slots where you could stick lots of little images and then um, sometimes one side has a larger slot so I could stick even bigger images but it's working pretty well for me and I sort them by category so I like I have one that's roses because I use a lot of roses so it has its own book and um, then I have one that's flowers for all the rest of the flowers um, I have one that's women children and men um, one that's, um, let's see, what else do I have? <laughs> I have miscellaneous and uh, just basically that's 
that's how I sort them out. I have one that has bows and labels and just different things like that. And then I have my little books that are uh, that hold um, hold, hold um, circles and tabs and things like that. It's working out pretty well. These little binders have worked really well for me. I probably should get some more the next time I go to the dollar store. They only cost a dollar. And then I just took um, scrapbook paper that um, I didn't think I would use for anything and used it to make the pages with. I don't like using these little paper clips. They're too tight and they, all, they often get hung up on the paper. So I only use them when I've run out of the bigger clips. Okay, so now I'm starting another set. And I just keep doing it this way. I just keep going until I run out. And um, it's basically the same process. And I've pulled out another set of images to use. And you know, I just slip through and see what else I want to use. So now these, these are similar images. They're not the same, but they are similar images. And um, they'll make a nice set of cards to go, uh, coordinate to go in, in a book. And since I've made them all at the same time, they're, they're going to look, when I pull these out and actually make the cards, they're going to look similar, but not exactly the same. So when I put them in the book, they'll coordinate and look nice in the book. And I'm just sort of regrouping now, picking things up and putting them together. And then they'll be ready to um, go again next time I want to work on something. Now, when, I, when I'm actually finished and really picking up my space, these will get sorted. If there, if there are images in here, they'll be sorted back into their storage books. And then the other pieces that aren't really images or that I'm just going to use as backgrounds or something, they'll go back into the little stacks and be clipped together for the next time I'm ready to use them. I hope seeing my process will help you to discover your own process for making clusters to use in your paper art projects. Please visit with me again, and I always welcome questions and comments. See you next time.